This video is brought to you by RogueDeckBuilder.com. Purchase a playmat today and help us make the move to our new studio. We have over 10 playmats to choose from. Visit RogueDeckBuilder.com. Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com, here with match number two in our Konza Tarkir draft. Yes, we'd like to play first. That's what a tempo deck wants. Um, Yeah, this is a keepable hand. We have Treasure Cruise. We have a, a turn two drop. We have four lands. I like this draw. Eventually, Treasure Cruise will find us three cards, which is very powerful in this format. Uh, again, delving off Crippling Chill. Delving in any sort of deck that puts stuff in the graveyard through instances. Is this the? Is this like the ship from uh, from World of Warcraft? <laughs> Doesn't this not look like that ship, the 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 Dead Mines, good old Dead Mines ship that you you raid in little harbor and little cave? Oh, that's that's hilarious. That's that's funny. Anyway, we'll get back to the game here. Yes, I have a history with World of Warcraft, like every other nerd. Uh, I actually can't stand that game nowadays. It's a story for another day. If I haven't told you that story, I'll tell you sometime. So let's go first turn island and pass the turn. <laughs> Still can't get over that. The dead mines. All right. See what we're up against. You know what? I think we beat out one of the more popular strategies in Outlast. So. He was light on black. Here's a heavier strategy on black. Uh, Sultai is still... Sultai Dredge is a limited strategy that's pretty decent. Or Mardu Aggro. Winter Flame is nice. We'll go Wetland Sandbar. Pass the turn. Love to draw into a Jeske Bird, whatever, Scout. No turn three on his, his part. Drawn to another land, more the merry at this point. Gets us closer to drawing into what we need. Or or uh, being able to cast treasure cruise. Down to an 18. First blood is ours. And it looks like if he's a tricolor deck, he's struggling on missing his colors. Yeah. Unless he's mono black for some some uh miracle. Still nothing. Have to worry about like throttles and whatnot, but if he wants to kill off a 2 1 with a throttle, and throttle's still a couple turns away. So the little elk that could is going to get in there for at least four. Definitely made it worth it. Unless he has some way to deal one damage. Again, I don't know the format too well, so bear with me. I don't know what cards can actually answer. At the moment, I've looked at Kanza Terk here a little bit. Usually, I do like a set review and I really analyze the set. I've been way too busy this time with the top ten, top ten list and and whatnot. Speaking of top ten list, that last card I tried to do on Wednesday, a few days ago, and realized that after the um, downtime on MTGO, they weren't allowing rotated cards to be in standard. So even though Kanza Terk here cards were not out yet, I was not allowed to use my top ten card and. Pretty disappointed with that, but I'm going to do a little tribute to it anyway. So a little Outlast 2-5 guy. Do I care about it? Yeah, sure. We'll get in there for some extra damage. Again, that's what Tempo Deck wants to do. It won't untap on his next turn either. I'd rather had a 2-1 flyer, but... There's a Singing Bell Strike. That'll be nice to tap it down again. And eventually those arrow strikes, I hope, will be exactly what we need. We have a Winter Flame that can kind of two for one. So this is exactly what I wanted when I was drafting this deck, what I wanted to happen. I wish we would have a few more early, early drops to get in there for some damage. Or that 3 to one blockable would have been amazing. So Enchanted Creature gets negative 2, negative 2. Okay, that, that takes care of it. So now we need to draw into another one. But now, good news is, we can Winter Flame that off. There's another Outlast deck, and he's finding what he needs. But I believe we can Treasure Cruise to try to find the 2-1. Quiet Contemplation's a decent little card. But this will refill our hand. 
There's our arrow storm. We are still missing that creature though. Um, quiet contemplation will be very, 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 very powerful. I'm gonna take some damage here. We have four damage from an arrow storm that is most likely gonna be five damage once we can get a Jeske scout. But he still has plenty of cards in his hand. Wonder if he starts outlasting these guys. Yeah, there's one outlast, and see if the Salt Road Patrol gets another outlast or if he decides just to attack with it. Nope, so just one damage coming down here. Good thing about our little bounce spell is we can do just that. Is we can bounce back as little outlast guys. And see, it's sorcery speed, so I think. All right, so here's what we're going to do untap, and then right now we're in a winter flame. Two damage to target creature. And so choose target creature, choose one or both. Tap target creature, deals damage to target creature. Oh, you can't spread that? That's terrible. Oh, well, at least we'll get to. Or could I? How is this card working and why didn't it allow me the, the options? It just automatically said... What? I'll have to look at that again how I cast Winter Flame. Choose one or both. Tap target creature. Winter Flame deals two damage to target creature. To me, that seems like I can target two creatures. We'll tap this down. Okay, that works. And it's not going to untap. We're going to kill that guy. And yeah, that's that's weird. Oh, again, we'll we'll see what's up with that. But we need to get out another one of our our finishers. And more hate blades. Another island. That's no good. I don't think we really need to worry about any of these guys so far. If they're just pinging me for one. Down to a 16. And ah, uh, that sucks. He does get back his 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 bond kin. He tapped his mana terribly though. Oh no, it comes back to the graveyard of the battlefield. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. So come on, we need a creature here. Preferably our four one. Unfortunately, it's an island. We'll chuck that out. At this point, does Arrow Storm, do we need to start playing more defensively? I don't think so. I'm just going to sing a bell strike on this dude. Which we can then tap down this guy again. Making it not untap. And yeah, we needed a few more creatures in this deck to really make it complete.
So next turn again we can force force away tap down something we have to. I'll just take the four. And don't even have to cancel for that. Flying Delve, 3-3. Three, three. Okay. And that's fine. Another island. I think that's all of them. Don't have to draw another island. And again, we'll just keep everything tapped down. Which, at this point, I don't know if we can afford to keep taking the four per turn. Especially with him able to untap everything. Down to an eight. And yeah, this guy is very terrible at this point. It does allow me to trigger off the arrow storm. And what we do need to hit is arrow storm, arrow storm. But he's going to be able to untap. And possibly even untap his other guy. I think we can block that guy. But I think we just go for the aggro strategy. Because we're going to need to force away something. So... We'll force away his highest mana cost one, which is going to be the Salt Road Patrol. And then we'll tap down his 2-1. But he's still going to be able to get him for five. Which puts me down to a three. And he's still going to be able to recast that. The Salt Road Patrol. So I need to draw into something miraculous here. Well, that's nice. But I don't believe I can block enough. So I can Arrow Storm off his Scavenger. And then force, tap something down, make it not untap. But, I mean, this is really my win con. Whoops, that already didn't untap. That was, that was silly of me. I'm just going to go on to the next one. There's nothing to do to, to stop his aggro. Uh, we needed those, those Jessica Wind Scouts out earlier. Again, there's really nothing we can bring in here to deal with his 
his aggression. I mean, I, I, I could start to say now maybe is the time to think about splashing for the third color. It does allow me these bigger creatures. And these bigger creatures, I don't know if the death touch, though, if they really do much. There's a Dell 4-4 Trampler guy. There's the incremental gross that actually seemed very, very good on a Jeske. But then at that point, you have to really start thinking about putting in... I mean, these are these are just better replacements than the Wetland Sandbar. But is it worth it to screw up my mana base? And I'm not I'm not quite sure it is. Blinding spray is a must to come in. Absolutely. The the Highland Games, I guess, you know, they're tempo cards that I'm gonna put in the incremental of the Highland Games. A card that I'm not liking right now is this Force Away. I'm gonna have to put in more lands. A lot of of I'm saying like five or six. Probably at least five. If I was gonna go this, and then we take out a mountain. Well, probably another a forest can come out, four forests in the woodlands. So that's 17 lands. We'd we'd still have to take out four four cards. And against this deck, I think it would be the cancels. Um, as they come out kind of weird versus his deck. Still like the incremental growth. Maybe we go down to 16 lands, but then no, there's no way I'm going down to 16 lands. I have to hit. Well, seeing bell strikes actually seem kind of weak versus him. And this would allow us to put in like a uh, a hooting mandrels, a four four with delve, or just an alpine grizzly. But with his deck, I don't know if alpine grizzly necessarily does much. And we could bring back in a cancel, or just bring back in a singing bell strike. Because I do want to go up in the creature count. No, I think we'll just we'll keep in two singing, and this we'll submit this and see how well this works. And hopefully, we just don't get messed up on the mana base now. So we hit all our mana, which is lucky, and all of our creatures. So we'll we'll definitely keep this. Start off with an island, then a highland game. And then a Jeske Wind Scout, and then hopefully now we'll draw into the non-creature permanents. And be able, be able to aggro them out. Start off with a first turn island. Pass the turn. And he actually has a mountain. Okay, so didn't see any of the mountains. No first turn drop, which is nice. So let's go ahead and play the Highland game. Pass it to him. And still no drop. A lot of his deck was white. He could be struggling on that third color. There's an arrow storm now, and we do need to hit into that third uh, red source, which is hopefully gonna happen. But we'll go ahead and put out our little flyer. Pass the turn. And there's his white. So he's got it all. A morph card. Not too worried about a morph card. Uh, we will cast the Quiet Contemplation. Or actually another Jeske Wind Scout. Get him down to a 14. And this is looking so brutal with an Arrow Storm. Bring low. Okay, that takes care of one of them. 
But I still get in for 4 damage this next turn. There's an island. It's not what we're looking for, but it'll do. Quiet Contemplation can come out. A uh, Wetland Sandbar can come out. We'll attack him for 5, get him down to a 9. And any sort of red is pretty much a, is pretty much victory. Guess I should have taken these bring lows a little bit higher. I don't know if I was quite in the draft was into red. Nothing on his part. Okay. Come on, give me an on land. That will actually work very well. Jeez, I hate how this does. How do I choose one or both? There we go. Let's let me. So, tap to our creature deals two damage to our creature. Okay. We're going to go two or both. Here. Okay. Did it choose both, though? This is so goofy sometimes on Empty Joe. So, now he's got decisions to make here. We over either overkill this. So, is going to go on to this little morph guy. So, pro S triggers. He's got to react to that, which probably has another bring, bring low. Which he does decide to morph it. Ah. All right, still going to die. But he gets the three one one goblins. That's a obnoxious. Cause it gives him the blockers he needs. But we still get in there for three, and he's still close to dying with an arrow storm. So I hope this isn't gonna be another game where we're so close. Oh that's gaining life too. So close to actually taking him out. And there's the bring low. That sucks. Another wetland. And it looks like now we're just going to proceed to get that pony back. Had to be a pony back and the right amount of mana to do so. Oh, that's very unlucky. So, okay, I gained two life. A lot of removal in his deck. Another island, which is not the red. And he's still got three cards in hand, where we're, we are completely out. We're, I'd love to find the treasure cruise. Or any, any old spell will actually work at this point. Because it can tap down one. Still has a lot of cards in his hand. There's the mountain, so that's going to be nice. See what happens in a turn. There's got to be some sort of shenanigans he's keeping in his hand. We haven't drawn into our rare card that's... Um, counters a spell and deals damage. I'd love to see that just one time in this draft. Island again. Still can't do much.
any one of our flyers, our Scald Turn will win it, our Ash Cloud will win it. He's going to start getting in with the aggression. He definitely should. And another Hate Blade. And he's keeping up his mana. <laughs> another Mountain. Okay. At this point, I think I need to block one of them. Well, no. We can actually... We can do some damage here if he has no other creature. <laughs> but a pivotal time where we needed to top deck anything but a land. We get a land. Alright, so maybe he does it again, though, next turn. Only seven more lands in our deck. So many cards that draw. We have a lot of dead cards, though. Down to a 12. He has five cards in his hand. Getting close to being able to cast Double Arrow Storm, though. There we go. Perfect card. Do we morph it? What does it cost to morph? I don't believe we do. So we can morph it in for three. Oh, wait a second. We do morph this in. That was the perfect card to draw into. Because we have enough to morph it. It's six mana. And when he tries to kill it, we morph it. And then it remorphs. And we should have this. Unless he's got some trick up his sleeve. We definitely block here. Tara, destroy target blocking creature. Creatures that were blocked by this creature. Okay, so. You can't respond to morph is the coolest thing. It does two damage to me though, which is hurtful. But we have Aerostorm in our hand. To deal five damage, which should be the remainder damage we need to do. And I take three, puts me out of seven. He could have one arrow storm in his hand that will take me down to a two. There is that deflecting spell as well. That I could just get blown out by. And if that's the case. That's just. That's life. Four cards left in his hand. Plenty of mana. Looks like he's going to throttle. Maybe exile the Ash Cloud Phoenix. He still has that perfect mana up for the that deflecting spell. Throttling. Okay, so he doesn't. Oh, that's sweet. So Phoenix dies. He's got two mana up. I don't think there's anything he can do to come out of this. So we'll, we'll go to attacks. Attacking with both of our Elks. I'm sure he'll block.
And Death Touch, okay, he's fine. Gets Death Touch again, and this is game. Because we did attack. And that is 5 damage perfect. And no response to that. Oops, now I have to stack this. All right, so we'll go to the sideboard. I don't know, cancels still seem pretty good in this. So does singing bell. A uh, singing bell strike is the more and more that I think about singing bell strike, the more I hate it in this matchup particularly. So I think cancels will provide. No, because seeing a bell strike, yeah, this just got too many like one ones that I can't even do anything about. But again, I what do I need to tap down out of his deck that's it's it's tempting to just go into these banners and try to get like these Colossuses and these woolly loxidens and then we have the Tamir Ascendancy that could do stuff, but Nah, I don't I don't I don't think that's the right way to go. And we could give a, a Tamir Ascendancy in here instead of a cancel. And it, it triggers off only one guy though. Is it worth giving our stuff haste? Our Jeske Wind Scouts haste. But he's got he's got a lot of control. And these wetland sandbars actually do seem terrible versus him. And Highland games are okay, but we'd want to bring in everything that can actually trigger off the ascendancy. We're going to cut a land since we're going down. It's definitely going to be a forest that we're cutting. Or wait, these these both add for blue, so we'll cut an island. And we'll go to 16 lands. And chuck in all of our big fat creatures. And then maybe the Highland games are just weaker. Or cancels are just weaker. Highland Games, again, he's just got too many 2-1s, 1-1s, and I don't think that they're going to get the job done. I hope that this is the right line of play. I'm not sure if it's going to be. We're going to try this other little strategy. So, I can't keep a 1-lander. So I have to mulligan this. I can't keep a one lander, so I have to mulligan this. And this is the best we can hope for, a two lander. Um, unfortunately, I think we're just going to lose regardless of the mulligans, regardless of what we would have done there. 16 lands, though, I think with two banners is still fine. There's a Solte banner. It will actually get us every color we need. But mulligan to five is rough. In any sort of limited environment, mulligan to five is, is very, very hard. Especially when he's got a two one. All right, so now we can cast everything. This isn't too bad. Kind of wishing I would have that elk by now, though, or the, the Highland. But, I mean, it looks like he's he's just aggroing out like crazy. That's probably going to be a pony back. That's the only thing we've seen. We're ramping pretty decently. But I think I have to use this arrow storm proactively because Ponyback is five. And another card in the graveyard. So let's go for it. Get rid of the Ponyback. And try our best to stabilize. We have a 4 4 that can sort of stabilize. That outlet is going to be annoying. Flying is going to be annoying. We have no way to gain life either. And he's got... <laughs> he's got one of these too. That's obnoxious. I 
I bet he puts Outlast on both his guys. That'd be the smart play. And he decides, yep, it's going to be Outlast, Outlast. Which allows us to actually get in for four. But we are determined to draw every land in our deck now that Mulligan to uh, five isn't bad enough. This is the only way I think I can beat this, though. No, there's no way. I can't attack. I got to crippling chill his his three six lifelink guy, and just hope for something that can actually stop him. He's got a throttle here. That's going to be very difficult for me to deal with. Nope, just another salt salt road patrol. And he's just going to outlast his big guy again. But at this point, I don't think there's enough cards I could ever draw into to come back from this. We're very low on removal, and <laughs> yeah, we draw land. How about that? He wanted his Outlast guy big enough to kill my my Mandrels, but I don't think at this point you just start attacking and gaining life in the, my type of deck. There's nothing I can do against any sort of life gain. I need him down to as, as low as possible. And at this point, he could have just leaping, leaping master, attacked me with everything type thing, and then just easily templed me out. So here's going to be Crippling Chill. We had a Wind Scout, which at this point I don't think is going to do much. And he does decide to just leave it back. And another Outlast. So he's an Outlast deck too. It's crazy there's enough Outlast cards going around for both of my opponents to have such insane Outlast cards. And at this point, like I, I didn't get any way to get rid of this Battle Priest. I have to draw into my other Arrow Storm to kill the, his Battle Priest. And I don't, I don't even think that will do enough. Well, here's the Ascendancy, which will be nice, kind of, if I draw into, like, the perfect string of cards. And I, I did this wrong because I could have attacked with my guy. But at this point, I think I just need to bring him back. Or keep him back to actually block. And he knows that, yeah, he's got a 3-5 life linker. Just really nothing I can do here. And got to make the obvious way that he's can, he can pump up this, this priest. He's just going to throttle down the, the hooting mandrels, I guarantee. That's... Bring low... Okay. And we will block the priest. No more lifelink. But again, at this point, oh, he's just got the plus, the ride down. And that should be game, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I go to a one. See if we can do 28 damage in one turn with a Tamir Ascendancy. And let's see here. What is the amazing card we can get? It's a... Uh, hey, this would have been cool. See what we, we draw into. Now this draws us a card. Yes, we'd like to draw a card. And it's just Wooded Full Hill. So we'll go on to the next match. A little bit... I feel really unlucky there with the, the mulligans and the drawing every nonsense land possible. But again, there we do, we do have some outs with our type of deck with... Like the negative, negative two, negative 
uh, negative four, negative zero, draw a card. Then on the backswing, you can kill him in one turn. Quiet Contemplation would have been amazing. Um, but it is what it is. When are we ever going to draw a Mind Sweep to actually cast? This card seems very good in our deck. Um, haven't seen it yet. Anyway, we'll go on to the next game. Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.